So um, across from, uh, on the other side of that, uh, uh, the canal, or the run, uh, on the other side where the bridge is, but on the same side that the store's on, and at the bridge, was a white frame building that was the Falmouth Masonic Lodge. Now, I, I painted that into my picture, too, because um, Fredericksburg has always felt terrible because they're the first lodge, but we did have a Falmouth Masonic Lodge, and one of the Englands, John England, was a furniture importer, and he had uh, a, a chair imported from Scotland for the Masonic uh, Lodge, Falmouth Lodge. And when they um, gave up, you know, when it was all over with, um, it was there in the 30s and 40s because we were in the store. And I can remember one of uh, my dad's cousins, one of the Englands coming in and said, uh, Clarky, I got to borrow some money. My dad's name was Meet Clark. And he said, well, what do you want? Of course, they, they, they didn't have banks around there, you know, just loaned from each other at the store. He said, I've got to get my Masonic hat. And so that was the big deal. And I stayed right under his feet because I was the little girl. My brothers were older in school. And um, I was seven years from the youngest one. So um, that was the biggest thing to see when Willie England was going to get his Masonic hat. So uh, time went on, and I can remember, and he'd come to the store, and he'd say, I'm going over to the post office, Clark, you see my hat's come. All right, Daddy said, and he had given him the money, you know, to get it. So they, uh, he came, and I do remember that going to his funeral, which is up at the uh, Union Church that's still there in the Brooks, uh, uh, well, it's adjoining the Brooks part, uh, because he was in England, um, the, the funeral. And they had a full Masonic funeral. And of course, well, I was about six then, and that was very impressive to see all the plumes and things. So now that was a Masonic Lodge. And then on that same side of the street going up Washington Street, it's called now. It was Old Road 17 then. And um, it's the tavern. And uh, we just called it, it was Miss Nellie Brown's house. And she was an organist. She was some kin to the, to the Brookses and Englands. I don't know exactly what it was. But we'd go up there as children, and she'd open the door and play the organ for us. And it was, it was just a, a beautiful, beautiful little life there. So then um, when you cross the street uh, after the tavern and crossing there, the Fritters lived there. They were um, a family that came in there. Uh, I think they were German extraction. And then coming on down was the, the Robinsons, uh, which uh, Miss Gertie was a Brooks, and she was a teacher. Her sister was a nurse. And uh, then next down, a little bit further from them, on the, on the run, was uh, Marion Brooks and her family, St. Clair Brooks. Her father uh, was very good friends with John Lee Pratt. And that's why you have uh, uh, you know, St. Clair Brooks Park over there. But anyway, he lived there just as one of the, uh, the regular people. And then um, when we crossed back to the bridge, uh, there's a stone structure there now, which was Gary Melcher's studio. You come up a half a block when you get to the river, and there's a big brick building. And uh, in the 1930s, I can't think of what they called it, um, they had a, always had a restaurant in there. And then they, in the 40s, they named it Ye old eating house. I love that one. And it was ye old eating place. And during the the war and everything, I mean, it was really something with all those young servicemen, and all, all the local boys. Now you all went to ye old eating place to dance, to eat, to whatever, drink, whatever you were going to do. So uh, then that's right there, bordering the river. And then there was a bridge there. So that bridge was wiped out in a flood. And so um, that's why the new bridge is above the village. So, but when uh, when uh, this happened, this uh, 1930s recollection, um, the bridge was there. And when you walked over to that side of the street, there's another big building, and it was called uh, Lightner's Ice Cream Parlor. And Miss Lessie Lightner had the ice cream and a little small tea shop. And, oh, it was so delightful. Everybody, we went over there in the village, you know, and, and I grew up, if I was good, I could take my finger and ring that cash register and get a nickel. And then my daddy would take me over there to go to Miss Lessie's for my ice cream. 
And then adjoining her was a big uh, feed store that the Lightners had. That, that building is still there intact. And that's a very old building, and it's a lovely setting between those two big brick buildings down there. And then next to that was the Falmouth Post Office. And um, then uh, at that time, um, Route 1 ran right down through the village, right there. So when we were coming up from the post office on your right, going up the road, which is now Route 1, um, that frame house is the home of um, um, Basil Garden, a kin. And we had the letters and literature on that from one lady that lived there. And Basil Gordon was the first self-made millionaire, one of them, in the United States. And he, see, Falmouth was a port. And they, the river was open and they could get him up here. And uh, they came up here as regular as they would to Fredericksburg back, you know, in those days. And so uh, there is another uh, big house with a stone wall. Well, when, when before they put the highway through there, it was terraced all the way down to the road. And that was my Aunt Fanny's. Uh, Grandfather Brooks bought that for his oldest daughter for her wedding. And uh, that sits right across the street from the old Brooks home. So after we go to the church, you can walk to the end of the street to where it comes to Butler Road. Now, that's all construction now, so I don't know what it's called or named or anything. On the corner is a large frame house on your left. Uh, that was Dr. Jett's home. He was a doctor that came in here from Scotland. And he had two daughters, and they were very good friends of my Aunt Geneva, who was the main lady down at the home house after she was an old maid and that her love affair didn't work out. And uh, so anyway, uh, that is, uh, that's still standing. And Gordon Gay uh, had his law office there for years and years and years. And then down below that, uh, my Uncle Eddie, which was one of the oldest uh, Brooks children of Mary Osmond and Ed Brooks, uh, I think they called it the Dunbar House, but I don't know much about it. Now, I do know this one. This has always been my favorite, and I've known about it since I was a child. Across the street is a great big manor house with palace on it. It was the Duchess of Marlborough's house. And this is the truth. The Duchess of Marlborough, there were two daughters, very wealthy local people. And so the Dukes from England came over. You know, those, those Brits, they, they don't know anything about love. As they say, they get married and love comes later. But they knew they wanted that money to, to build their, keep their palaces. And one of them did. She married the Duke of Marlborough. And she took our American money and saved Blenheim Palace there in England. And Winston Churchill was there. He often talked about his American ancestry. And uh, this, I don't know whether it was his aunt or uh, what, uh, but Winston Churchill knew, was very well knew that. And then they also have a, over a choir, a marble, marble, Marlboro port, point. Um, you could cut across, and I don't know anything about it, but I'm sure the college does. There is the Melchers Manor. I do know, and I saw Mrs. Melchers. We had the little store there in Falmouth in the 1930s, and um, not many ladies drove a car then. And so one day I stayed right in the store with my dad because my brothers went to school, so I thought he needed me, you know. I was only allowed to stay in there one hour a day. The mother wouldn't let, me, wouldn't let me run the store the rest of the days. I usually got in there on cookie day. My dad arranged that, and when the salesman would come in, I was the taster. And if the cookies didn't taste good, I, he wouldn't buy them. So <laughs> the salesman just bought it up to me all the time. So uh, anyway, uh, I was up there one day, and uh, here this big station wagon came down, and a lady was driving it. And she came in to the store, so they, and uh, Dad knew her, and it was Mrs. Melchers. Now, Mr. Melchers, uh, uh, painted, you know, all around, and the house that I talked about being uh, on Cambridge Street across from the Brooks house had the big plum tree and all that in a lot of his paintings, and he would come there, and he 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 was very fond of the Brooks family, and and they liked the paintings and all, and so uh, that's about all I know. But the the college is doing a beautiful job on on that house.